Bees are such intrinsically fascinating insects. They've changed the face of our planet. Most of us don't understand how much bees are used for pollination. The bees are by far our most important group of insect pollinators, but they're not the only ones. We need to show more respect for our native insect pollinators. Robinvale, Victoria, home to the mighty eagles and lucky enough to have two Chinese restaurants. But I'm not here to see any of that. I'm here to see the single largest pollination event in Australia. You see, Robinvale is home to the $500 million Australian almond industry, an industry that quite literally rides on the bee's back. And the bee that bears the load is the European honeybee, or if you want to get all sexy, the Apis mellifera. Introduced to Australia in the 1800s, this bee is found on every continent except Antarctica. They're easily bred and hell-bent on collecting pollen, which makes bees like these big business. Every year, buzzing hives from all over Australia attract to southwest Victoria for the sole purpose of pollinating almond flowers. Put it simply, if there were no bees, there'd be no, no nuts. That's Trevor. He has coordinated this pollination party for the past 40 years. This guy's brought a load of bees in from Bateman's Bay and been given this designated spot to put the bees down. I have 185 plus beekeepers on, on the books that I deal with. They vary a lot from 20 hives of bees to five and a half thousand hives of bees. I went to lift one and Craig said, I said, shit they have. He said, yeah, they're screwed to the fella. <laughs> <laughs> the bees that we bring in uh, like appear to get quite excited about almond uh, flower. I believe that the reason is that there's cyanide in almond nectar. You know, normally cyanide would kill insects, but uh, it seems to excite bees. When it comes to you know, large monoculture orchards like that we're in today, there is just not enough habitat to create enough native bees or native pollinators to, to pollinate these orchards. Let's be honest, if we had to eat potatoes every day and every night for the next three weeks, we'd get sick of potatoes, so bees are no different. But it's not just almonds that honeybees are shipped in to pollinate. They're also used in apples, sunflowers, soybeans, apricots, mangoes, cherries, macadamias, nectarines, peaches, plums... So what would it mean for Australia if the bees we use for crop pollination got sick? In general, the bees in Australia are fairly healthy. Most of the diseases throughout the world we have, except that we don't have varroa mite. But last year we came mighty close, after varroa mite was found on a swarm of Asian honeybees in Townsville. Varroa mites are nasty bastards. They attach themselves to the bee, effectively stopping it from collecting pollen and feeding its young. Everywhere around the world where that varroa mite has invaded the country and the bee population has diminished, the prices for pollination has increased substantially and that cost would have to be passed on you know, by the grower to the consumer. Where it would really be noticed the most would be in the, in the homes and backyard they would all of a sudden find they had no bees. To investigate the possibility of alternatives to honeybees is probably an, an essential part of research that needs to be done. With an estimated 2,000 native bee species in Australia, could the alternative for large-scale crop pollination be right under our nose? Varroa mite is extremely unlikely to affect any of our native bee species. Tim Hurd and Tobias Smith are the kings of the native bee world. If varroa mite were to enter Australia and decimate our honeybee populations, then native stingless bees are part of the solution. The stingless bee, or Tetragonula cabinaria, it's native to the subtropical regions of Australia and it's very easily domesticated. The bee has a penchant for pollen and a passion for making honey. They all have their own personalities, the, how, how aggressive they are. So they don't sting, but they can, they can crawl on you and bite your eyelids. It is, it is exciting. Every time you open a hive, you don't quite know what you, you're going to get. Native stingless bees are one of the wild insects that you can manage. The fact that they can be reared in large numbers means that they're a great candidate for these sort of managed pollination systems. 
We're seeing more of our agricultural landscapes going over to these monocultures where we grow vast areas of single individual crops. While this might be a very efficient way of growing crops, unfortunately it's very hard on many native insects. In that case, we have to manage them in a more artificial way. We have to introduce those pollinators back into the orchard. Does it make you nervous carrying around like a, a boot full of bees? It does. It's kind of like carrying a dog in your car. In fact, it's more like carrying a couple of hundred thousand dogs in your car. The idea of using stingless bees, of managing stingless bees for farms has been around for a while now. It's been around for a few decades, but we're really only getting to the point now where we've got the numbers of hives available to do this. But we're trying to take it to the next step here. We're trying to set up stands where we can keep hives more efficiently on farms. And so we'll be seeing a lot of this in the future, I believe. But many aren't waiting for the future. Macadamia farmers like Brett Newell are already harnessing the pollination prowess of the stingless bees. We've only got nine hives currently, so we're not on a big scale by any means, but we're certainly hoping to grow that. I guess with the macadamia being a native, they have always uh, had native bees foraging on them, uh, so it's sort of the, the perfect combination, I guess you'd say. What we can see here is that all this yellow pollen that's coming in, it's macadamia pollen and I think it's fairly safe to say that these bees here are doing their job on this orchard. Native stingless bees can't replace European honeybees as pollinators of crops, but they can certainly help on a lot of crops and in some they'll be better. But given the subtropical nature of native stingless bees, it's unlikely we'll ever see them in an almond crop. But remember that bees aren't the only ones responsible for pollination. Bees are by far our most important group of insect pollinators, but they're not the only ones. Yeah, look, I think biodiversity of, of all the insects is pretty critical. They're all doing something. Uh, they're not just here for a free feed. It does translate into, at the end of the day, putting food on a plate. The number one thing that people can do to support insect pollinators is plant more flowers. So that's what they need, it's food. So the world needs more flowers? The world does need more flowers. Throw away your lawnmower and start planting flowers in your lawn instead.